the 20th system talk today with Dr. Jochen Büchel. Jochen, how's the weather in München? Oh, the weather is a mix. Today there was a little bit blue sky and sun. Now it's covered again, but it's usually in Munich, it's a change. Uh -huh. Is it as dry as here in Wendland, Lüchow? We have no rain so far for weeks now. Oh, it's pretty similar, yes. My name is changing the farther south. I think the south there is snow in the mountains, but here not too much, no. Okay. Jochen, you're currently a postdoc candidate of a chair for natural therapies consultant at the World Life Center by Chandau, Germany, associate member of Time Machine Association, knowledge manager, and recently a member of the Larnaca Conferences of the Von Welten Institute. Tell me, what does knowledge manager mean? Well, that's a good question. It's a terminus which I use to connect two worlds, knowledge. I use um, in order to avoid science because knowledge is about understanding and hidden between the mass of knowledge is wisdom. I think wisdom is very important, but I want to hide it. So knowledge is indicating to the importance of meaning, to understanding and manager it came across to me during the years that I need politics, that I need clusters, that I need context to, because companies sometimes are more powerful than academia. So manager indicates that I need strategy, that I need communication, traveling. So it's not just about putting into practice, but I need a lot of skills. And is this something you are, not, you are only doing for yourself or is this something you are doing uh, in context of the work you are, done for, you are doing for others? Oh, I think it's a little bit a mission because it took me some years um, during my chemical studies. I realized um, that I have a special mission and a passion for liveliness. I think that's the core. And liveliness is an old concept, more or less, which currently is not so famous. So I needed um, first to understand how do I understand this complexity and then what tools can I use to bring it today into, to make it an asset today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fascinating, thank you. So this is a combination of learning one and learning two, the concepts of uh, Gregory Bateson. Do you know them? Um, from Gregory Bateson, I know more his uh, anthropological approach mm -hmm. and uh, ethnological. And um, yeah, to connect um, this field study aspect um, with science and yeah, to mm -hmm. that we need special epistemological tools. Yes, yes, okay, thank you. Um, already during your studies of chemistry, your interest turned to philosophy, medicine, and also cosmology. Your dissertation already has a more holistic character than even today is common for academic writings of this format. Where do you see the advantages of a transdisciplinary and historically comprehensive integrative medicine? I think that the high-tech people are overestimating their disciplines. I was lucky to come across, let's call them geniuses or let's call them encyclopedic thinking people. So it took me so long for my master in chemistry to find my thesis advisor. I had several offers and finally, I realized also in bibliotechs that I need this cosmological view in order to create a special frame, you know, a frame which recognizes philosophy, but we also need uh, special philosophical views in, uh, in the sense of perception, in the sense of visionarity. And that's quite rare, that's forgotten. And there are just a, full, a few folks like you around who understand that we need um, a view through the dimensions. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, when I look at um, AI technology and research, and when I look at, uh, for example, system theory and research, I see the, the two of them um, would uh, um, profit a lot from working together uh, in a more intensive way. Um, from a transdisciplinary perspective, um, AI um, will never be um, human-like as long as we do not talk about uh, AI creating meaning, right? 
Yeah, I'm not an expert in AI, but the people who are observed who are talking about it, um, um, I observe in some uh, publications on robotics in these topics that I'm missing some anthropology and some organism theory. Mm -hmm. I think um, this, uh, that's why I chose my thesis advisor who studied organism theory from Hegel that the, um, I think yes, it is magic of what is life, the, the th theory of physiology, which almost doesn't exist, like Merlon Ponty introduced it a little bit, Bergson and Deleuze is one of my heroes. So that is, um, that is a little bit missing. And um, I'm always happy to see AI people who are open to phenomenology or media theory, but I think that this is just beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, in this context, would you explain the concept of cosmology to the audience who probably only know it from metaphysical, humanistic, or vice versa from context of physics? In my case, um, my thesis advisor um, took me back in time. So this cosmology is not too much physics based, but it's, it's in relation with a, a work, physical theology. So it's people like uh, Athanasius Kircher or Robert Flood, who were um, enlightenment began, where mechanistic theory was there, but who still tried to select special types of logics from theology, from philosophy. So to open up to other dimensions, to get these dimensions um, in a certain framing. I think Kircher maybe is one of the mo uh, most um, famous ones who used also optical instruments who used projection systems and the aspects of theater. Huh? There are some cultural scientists who, who like the theater in order to, as a collection, as a collection of knowledge elements, like in, in, in museums, to, to broaden the spectrum and to be able to integrate these different perspectives into one. Huh? That's why images like uh, this famous um, Leonardo da Vinci one, or the still not so known by Robert Flood. These are important and um, yeah, I know some people who tried this, but they are not yet integrated into life science, into medicine, still to do. Mm -hmm. um, for the audi audience who do not know any of this, when you uh, uh, explain cosmology uh, to a child, how would you do that? Cosmology is basically, basically about order, how things are ordered. That means how, how things of knowledge are placed to each other in a pattern in such a way that you get uh, intuitively a higher view. Because um, I concentrate on image cosmologies, because these images can have um, an, an um, a way into seeing it like mandalas. Um, so for for pe normal people, I think images is the best access, like this uh, Leonardo image most people know or when they go to a church or cinema. I think modern cinema, like Matrix, like Blade Runner cinema, I think is the most broad um, way. They are moving images, introduce some symbols who enable you to combine logic with intuition. Mm -hmm. um, so it is a little bit like a systems theory for everything? Absolutely, it's a systems theory, but um, as you think of Luhmann written down, I think systems aspects concerning with images are um, Leibniz used it. I discovered in my thesis that Leibniz made use of it. And later today, there are these infographics. And um, yeah, I think in some, there are some disciplines who are using it more and more, like also the apps in your handy, which are very narrow. So I, I wait for people who connect it um, with uh, daily use, maybe in medicine. I know, I think in medicine, there are some special people who use art therapy, and, and for, for complex diseases, um, but it's not common known. It's not uh, spread by the journalists. So mm -hmm. it's a knowledge which has to be brought together. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so um, you use concepts of cosmology and uh, merge them with concepts of modern science, correct? Absolutely. The okay. best to, to find there the bridges, which disciplines are open for it currently, 
their bows. They just shot close in November the Builder Atlas view, and they um, they don't head yet to digitalization, but around in this platform, House der Kultur und der Welt, they do it in other exhibitions. So there you find this cultural aspects of image oriented thing and in other events they did, they used a lot of digitalization. So I think media technology is the area where you can really fuse it. Okay, and uh, the concept of image, is it more than only visual? Is it more to be uh, understood in a kinesthetical way or is it uh, uh, concentrated on images alone? That's a good question. I think the origin are images um, who bring together different dimensions, but the kinesthetic aspect, I think it's in, in cinema already. I think mm -hmm. it's already there in films. And you know that in the modern operas, for example, I'm so amazed about modern operas who, who use both. They use kinesthetics in videos, then you have the actors on the stage. So I think kinesthetic um, in the arts, in the modern contemporary art is already present, but it's, it's far away in the arts. So the scientists, I think they should integrate with them. Yes, that is, that is fascinating um, because uh, one of our colleagues, uh, Franz Fritschewski from Von Welten Institute also, um, is working with, uh, a lot with the work of Bateson and uh, Immanuel Kant who wrote about um, um, Einbildungskraft, um, exactly. image, yes, in in uh, in uh, Kritik der Urteilskraft, mm -hmm. and um, that is related, I think, to what you are talking about now. Um, um, Einbildungskraft, image power, as the very foundation of um, the way how we create our world in order to um, become a. a, a uh, more integrated in our universal designs. Mm -hmm. And there are already people like Olafur Eliasson in Berlin, no, who has this big landscape architecture and he is collaborating with scientists. So I think that we need some platforms like museums to bring together this realm, which in theory already exists. Architecture mm -hmm. is one of the central areas that happened since much time. No? Yes, yes. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, when we look at your work in a larger overview, you don't really leave anything out <laughs> from art to eroticism as an art form of structure, structural coupling of mind, body and society. Uh, philosophy already named medicine and of course the basic scientific format. You are also interested in the great designs, as we just uh, heard, um, but also of the grand designs of the future, um, including artificial intelligence. What attracts you to this? And would you think that we are taking enough care of it in the context of the great design? Or should the questions be discussed more intensively, especially against the background of the coming meta crisis? No, I think that the, the, the topic of complexity are not yet really looked at in a broad enough sense. It often switches back to engineering or informatics. And I think I go to extremes like erotics or others because in my private life, um, I realized that if you want to heal or you want to um, find yourself, come to yourself, like, well, like in Individuation Theory of Carl Gustav Jung, you need um, a really profound understanding of the body. And I had to accept the realizing that um, aspects like dance um, or metaphysics or alchemy who seem far away, that one of the best exponents, they are related it because you need sometimes go out of the scene and include, huh? like many artists, Einstein was a musician, so I think one of the creative um, scientists did some arts or went to the woods like Holzwege, Heidegger. So you need inspiration from other realms and thus enter. I think that's also a lift cosmology. Yeah? Cosmology is not such a thinking thing, but if you put your body mind system into a certain context, then I think cosmology is a very down to earth thing. 
Mm-hmm. Fascinating. Uh, this reminds me of our research, at, actually, especially when you talk uh, about dancing, <laughs> uh, because when uh, we look at uh, self-referential and autopoietic systems uh, like co- human cognition and human com- communication, and of course the human body, it's all about self-personalization. Yeah, it all has to do with patterns in time. So um, now I think uh, the audience will kind of have a broader perspective on cosmology as something that connects everything. Yeah, the idea of everything is connected, but in a more um, um, scientific way, as only in the spiritual way, where often science is being uh, taken out <laughs> yeah. as, as the enemy of enlightenment, which I think is uh, fundamentally wrong, and working with the concept of science that is from the last century. Would you agree? Yes, and I think um, what we now have to look at again is something which already exists, it's relation aspects. You know, there's logic, there's this mechanistic, and the this, this stream, the energies, I think we have to understand again this relation aspect. Like in sociology, there's this actor network theory, and I just read a um, uh, dialogue between um, image researcher with Bruno Latour some years ago, but I think it's still valid that this what is the relation huh? and how can you combine causality with other things like energy stream and uh, I think we should expand our understanding of multiple ways of understanding relations. I think this will help us a lot to find new ways of um, understanding. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you recommend uh, studying modern sciences to spiritual people? To spiritual people? Mm-hmm. Yes, um, but um, you, then you would need people who um, who already worked on the links. I mean, I think um, some people who study theology, like uh, Teilhard de Chardin, maybe is one of these guys. Huh? Mm-hmm. He was a theologian, and but um, dealt with um, living systems. I think you need the people who, like Carl Gustav Jung, he talked with Wolfgang Pauli about mandala-like uh, tools. You just need to find, find the right people. I think personalities are the ones who best bring it together because mm-hmm. they lived it sometimes in the past. So I like biographies, film biographies, like currently the Einstein biographies in 10 chapters. I would like to expand you now from Einstein, for example, to Pauli or to other people because um, some people who live, when you meet them, they open your doors much faster than you read a book of thousand pages. Mm-hmm. Yes, okay, that's, that's, that makes sense. A friend of mine um, always says um, that he loves uh, scientists who explain who they are in order to comprehend better what they are talking about, because there's an interest behind it. Why do we do what we do? Yeah, and uh, the way we, the moment we explain this to others, it is far more easy to connect with the research. Yes, that's a that's a very, very important uh, statement. Thank you. Um, my last question is, if you could give the world an advice that would be listened to, um, what would it be? At the moment, I really would um, recommend to integrate more exhibitions. In the last years, what um, touched me most were exhibitions at new type of exhibition centers like ZKM Karlsruhe, Ars Electronica Linz, and in Spain, um, because um, there this um, aesthetics, the aesthetics in the sense of teaching yourself how to see, how to experience things, I think there is still much to go because many of these exhibitions are um, still a bit focused on arts and the link and or on history and the link to today. I think uh, again this platform, this fora, this architectures. Um, should be helpful. For example, in Spain, the Caixa Foundation is building forums. I think that's the right context where architecture and um, foundations, certain foundations who have the context, can bring together the systems in a way which um, not just touches the head but also the heart. Mm, okay, so, uh, so because it's a real life experience or why? Yes, for first this and then the, the environment. That's sometimes also like a cosmology down to earth. Um, that certain rooms, um, certain speakers. I, I remember the Reich der Sinne um, events in Bonn in Kunst und Ausstellungshalle BRD, 
who explained the census. There were talks and then there were exhibitions around. So with a mix of how to experience things. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, essential to connect um, the emotional with the rational aspect. Yes, thank you. So it's all about integration, yeah? Integration and using um, levels of understanding, perspectives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I call that comprehending or comprehension. Yeah, yeah. and there's one where I make the difference. Uh, I distinguish between understanding and comprehending as comprehending. The, the German word begreifen makes it more clear yeah, that we uh, touch things from various perspectives. And by that, we get a broader and wider perspective on what we are doing here and what we are seeing. And maybe doing what you do, bringing together certain people. I think uh, not everybody can be productive with everybody. So bringing together the right people, there are some working groups like um, the Copenhagen circle around Niels Bohr or this Warburg circle uh, in Hamburg. I mm. think bringing together the right people, if you already succeed in this, which is difficult, I think this has some magic in it. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yes, I totally agree. Um, the uh, idea for the Larnaca conferences came, well, came by the Macy conferences back then, in the last oh, century. Really? Yes, uh, inspired by Heinz von Förster. Mm. Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you very much for your time. We will talk a little bit more after I shut down this recording. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much because uh, the right questions and the right person are essential to get the new view. I, I totally agree. And this was a pretty exciting talk. And uh, it was pretty uh, inter uh, informative, uh, also informative. Uh, I always get that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We will so talk. Was an mm -hmm. honor. Yeah. Same here. Thank you, Jochen. <laughs>